Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 3rd of August. Top ministers in hospital as virus cases breach 50,000 for fifth day in India. Mass jailbreak in Afghanistan, at least 24 die in Islamic State attack. And sibling festival Raksha Bandhan celebrated with fervor in India, Nepal. And now for all the details. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah and Chief Ministers of two big states have been hospitalized with COVID-19 as the country's daily cases topped 50,000 for a fifth straight day on Monday, taking its tally way past the 1.8 million mark. India recorded over 50,000 coronavirus cases for a fifth consecutive day, taking its tally way past the 1.8 million mark. India's dead toll now stands at 38,201. Three most affected states by total tally of cases are Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. India's health ministry issued revised guidelines for international travellers arriving in India. According to the new guidelines, passengers flying to India from 8th of August can skip institutional quarantine if they submit COVID-19 negative test reports. The RT-PCR test should have been conducted within 96 hours prior to undertaking the journey. The Health Ministry also issued guidelines on preventive measures to contain the spread of COVID-19 in yoga institutes and gymnasiums. It has allowed yoga institutes and gymnasiums to reopen from August 5. On Sunday, India's Interior Minister Amit Shah and Southern Karnataka Province Chief Minister B.S. Yadiyarappa were reported to be among prominent political leaders who have tested positive for coronavirus. Shah, a close aide to Prime Minister Narendra Modi, heads the ministry that has been at the forefront of managing the epidemic. The chief of the central state of Madhya Pradesh is also recovering in hospital. Chief Minister of India's Uttar Pradesh state Yogi Adityanath visited Ayodhya city on Monday to take stock of preparations for the foundation stone laying ceremony of Ram Temple by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on August 5. Preparations including a cleanliness drive and sanitization are underway in Ayodhya ahead of the grand event. Ayodhya city is being painted in colors of red and saffron ahead of the construction of the temple on the site in Ayodhya, contested by Muslims for decades in a dispute that sparked deadly riots in the country. Earlier, India's Supreme Court ruled in favor of Hindus to construct a temple on the site where a Mughal-era mosque was raised by a Hindu mob in 1992. Hindus claimed the mosque was constructed on the land after destroying a Ram temple by Mughal Emperor Babur. Moving on, Baloch Republican Party held a protest in Hanover against the recent brutal killing of five abducted Bhakti tribesmen by the Punjab police in Rajanpur, some 400 kilometers from Pakistan's Lahore city. According to the Baloch activist, the five Bhakti tribesmen were abducted from different places and killed in a fake encounter in Rajanpur on July 31st. The Punjab police claimed that they belonged to outlawed Balochistan Republic Army. The Baloch Republican Party or BRP held a protest on Sunday in Germany's Hanover city against the recent brutal killing of five abducted Bhukti tribesmen by the Punjab police in Rajanpur, some 400 km from Pakistan's Lahore city. The BRP Germany chapter organized the rally and highlighted crimes against the people of Balochistan by Pakistani authorities. We condemn this act of brutality of Pakistan army. We request this world. We request the United Nations. We request the European Union. We request the human rights activists to stand with us and help us against this brutal act of Pakistani army. According to the Baloch activists, the five Bukti tribesmen were abducted from different places and killed in a fake encounter in Rajanpur on July 31. The Punjab police claim that they belong to the outlawed Balochistan Republic Army or BLA. 
a large number of Baloch people, including political activists, journalists and other intellectuals have been victims of enforced disappearance in Balochistan. The Baloch activists claim they have been abducted by secret agencies and many of them are languishing in isolated detention centers. They even say the security forces also kill many of them and throw their bodies in isolated places. In news from Afghanistan, a gun battle between Islamic State fighters and Afghan security forces raged at a prison in the eastern Afghanistan on Monday. At least 24 people have been killed after the militant's overnight assault led to a mass jailbreak. A gun battle between Islamic State fighters and Afghan security forces raged at the prison in the eastern city of Jalalabad on Monday with at least 24 people killed after the militants' overnight assault led to a mass jailbreak. The attack began on Sunday evening with car bomb detonated at the entrance to the prison and there were numerous other blasts heard as the Islamabad state's gunmen opened fire on security guards. Some 30 militants involved in the attack on the prison where some 2,000 prisoners were held according to a lawmaker. The <laughs> ملکی وگڑی ماشومان امنیتی منصوبین او څوته نه زندانیان هم شامل دي همدار از دری سل وخت نه نور ټپیان دي افغان سپیشل فورسز ارایو ټو سپورټ پولیس اکورډنګ ټو دی افیشلز اند سیویلینز ویر بینګ ایواکویټډ فروم ایریا سراونډینګ دی پریزن ویر طالبان اند اسلامیک سټیټ پریزنرز ویر بینګ هیلډ الونګ ویت اورډینری کریمینلز اسلامیک سټیټ کلیمډ ریسپونسیبلټی فور دی اټاک Sri Lankans are all set to elect their representative to the 255-member parliament on August 5 that have been twice postponed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa hopes to tighten his hold on the nation's fractious politics in an election on Wednesday that could elevate his brother Mahinda Rajpaksa and allow the two to change the constitution if they prevail. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa hopes to tighten his hold on the nation's fractious politics in an election on Wednesday that could elevate his brother and allow the two to change the constitution if they prevail. Mahinda Rajpaksa, Gotabaya's elder brother and former president, is the current caretaker Prime Minister. The Rajpaksa brothers are best known for crushing Tamil separatists fighting for a separate homeland for the ethnic minority. The 26-year civil war ended under the elder Rajpaksa's presidency. Given the support the brothers enjoy among the Sinhalese majority, Mahinda is favoured to become Prime Minister over opposition candidate Sajid Premadasa, analysts say. Premadasa is the leader of the newly formed Samagi Jana Balavegaya political alliance. Premadasa broke away from the country's oldest political party, the United National Party, in March 2020, along with the majority of its members, following a leadership tussle with longtime leader Ranil Vikramasinghe, who refused to step down. Parliamentary polls have twice been postponed because of the COVID-19 pandemic. The tiny Indian Ocean nation has reported 2,823 infections of the new coronavirus and 11 COVID-19 deaths as of Monday. The totals are lower than in neighbouring South Asian countries held in check by a strict lockdown since March. As the COVID-19 pandemic has forced educational institutions in Nepal to go online, teachers who faced hurdles in conducting virtual classes initially have found a solution now. In order to help teachers upgrade their technological skill, a government school has started training them first. With COVID-19 outbreak forcing educational institutions of Nepal to go online, teachers like Dawa Lamba, who face confusion in conducting virtual classes initially using the online platforms, don't feel the same way now. 
After attending a training camp organized by Patan Secondary School for teachers, Lamba say he has upgraded his technological skill and ideas. The school is providing training to teachers to enable them to conduct virtual classes efficiently. COVID-19 students are training Established years ago, Patan Secondary School hosts about a thousand students who belong to weak economic backgrounds. With uncertainty looming over reopening of educational institutions, the school thought to choose the alternative way and cope with the technology for which it considered an upgrade in teachers' technological skills. People in parts of northern India on Monday celebrated the festival of Raksha Bandhan by tying rakhis or sacred threads on wrists of their brothers. The sibling festival is celebrated as a mark of revered bondage between sisters and brothers. Women in parts of northern India tied rakhis or sacred threads on their brothers' wrists as they marked the sibling festival of Raksha Bandhan on Monday. In northern Amritsar city, women celebrated the festival at their homes and gifted their brothers masks and sanitizers as they wished for the protection of their brothers from coronavirus. My brother came to my house and I took a mall 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 and I took a mask and I took a sanitizer and I took a mall. Rakhis were also tied to trees and idols of gods in northern Kanpur and Ayodhya cities to mark the auspicious occasion. Rakhi is tied to brothers, trees and to god idols as a mark of revered bondage with them. हमारे भाई लोग हमारी रक्षा करते हैं उस तरह से ये पेड़ भी हम लोग की भी रक्षा करने का प्रयास करें और हम लोग की हमारे वातावरण को भी संतुलित रखने का प्रयास करते हैं इसलिए आज हम लोग ये रक्षा बंधन का पर्व ये पेड़ों पे राखी बांधकर मना रहे हैं मीनवाइल पीपल ऑफ नेबरिंग नेपाल सेलिब्रेटेड द डे एस जन्नाई पूर्णिमा during which a sacred thread is tied to the wrist of the males and they also change the cotton string they wear around their body on the occasion of jannai purnima families organize get togethers and feast people on the day also visit hindu temples and religious sites a calligraphic artist in india jammu and kashmir is holding on to the age old tradition of calligraphy in an endeavor to promote and revive the fading art. Calligraphy in Kashmir is an ancient art. It suffered during the times of insurgency, but now the interest in art is reviving. Turning her childhood dream into profession, Saima Bhatt from India's Jammu and Kashmir territory expressed her desire to preserve the age-old traditional Kashmiri art of calligraphy. Originally from Anandnag district and currently residing in Srinagar, but wanted to pursue the Urdu calligraphy art since childhood. She went to government middle school and did her higher education from Kashmir University. Following this, her parents wanted her to study medicine, but took up the Urdu calligraphy course in the Art, Culture and Languages Academy, which is a government institute in Srinagar. कि एक्चुअली मैं चाहती हूँ कि हाँ ठीक है ये सारा कुछ है हमारे पास हम इस टाइम मतलब मॉडर्न टाइप इस टाइम चल रहा है सारा गैजेट्स का जमाना है या फिर कंप्यूटर्स का जमाना है सारा कुछ लेकिन हमें चाहिए कि हम जो हमारा पास्ट है जो हमारा कल्चर है जो हमारा अदब है हम उसको ना बोले मैं चाहती हूँ कि ये प्रिजर्व रहे और जितना मुझसे हो सके अल्लाह का साथ रहा तो मैं इसको जितना हो सके मैं इसको प्रिजर्व करने की कोशिश करूँगी Calligraphy, which is known as Khattadi in Persian and Khushnavisi in Urdu, was popular all over the world, especially in Islamic countries and different states of India, including Hyderabad, Lucknow and Mumbai. According to Bhatt, technology has overpowered the traditional art form of Kashmir. Calligraphy in Kashmir is an ancient art. It suffered during the times of insurgency, but now the interest in the art is reviving. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash AsiaNewsline and follow us on Twitter at AsiaNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button